Good afternoon, this is Rashad Mitchell coming to you live from my YouTube channel as I continue on my part series on this, excuse me, the week that was college football history review, the 1963 college football season, we're going to get into it for November 9th, 1963, this is week number 8, let's get into it, week number 8, November 9th, 1963, Harvard beat Princeton by a score of 21-7, when severe plus three wins discouraged all but three passes and by the Princeton single wing center snaps, Harvard surprised Tigers with a superior ground game, notching 226 yards to Princeton's 163 yards. Princeton halfback Dave Pohl and quarterback Mike Bassett scored to climax drives of 66 and 52 yards. Princeton got within 14 7 in fourth quarter on fullback Cosmo Igavasi's touchdown deep at end of. 93 yard march that was keyed by wingback Jim Rockenbach's big gains on reverse runs. The Tigers lost fumble to Harvard defensive star guard Bill Southmay at own 21 yard line and thus handed away late clinching touchdown run to fullback Bill Granite. Next, Clemson beat North Carolina by a score of Clemson beat North Carolina by a score of 11-7 as North Carolina five-game winning streak was smothered under a pall of Tigers, which won their third in a row. Loss dropped Tar Heels into a three-way tie for first in ACC with Duke and NC State, all at 5-1. So overwhelming was Clemson's first-half margin of play that North Carolina could feel glad to be trailing only by 3 nothing at head to mission. Tar Heels directly reversed trend at the third quarter kickoff as they went 82 yards to score in 15 plays. So on drive, quarterback Junior Edge popped three quick passes to end Bob Lacey, good for 10, 9, and 9 yards, which North Carolina had back Ken Willard rammed over from three yard line for 7 3 advance. Clemson's decisive 88 yard trip to mar winning margin came in fourth quarter as quarterback Jim Parker whipped the one of four long pass, successes by Tigers 38 yard completion to back up M. Johnny Case to Hill's 33 yard line. From there, Clemson hammered away with halfback Mac Matthews and fullback Pat Crane to one yard touchdown push by Parker. In Lou Fogel caught Parker's two point uh, pass. North Carolina State beat Virginia Tech by a score of 13 7, while Wild Wolfpack was using Dying Quail touchdown pass, hustling from recovery and stout defensive line play to wrestle non conference Virginia Tech into submission. It took a breather from ACC. While away, they move into first place tie in opening quarter. NC State quarterback Jim Rossi wobbled short past the fleet, scat back, half back Joe Scapati. Scapati, who raced to score the seventh touchdown of the year on a 16 yard play, the 6 0 lead. The third quarter, Gobbles had back Mike Cahill, foolishly attempted over shoulder to catch Wolfpack punter Dave Hoots. 51 yard punt at two yard line. Ball was fumbled with Cahill. NC State had back Tony Kazarski making simultaneous dives. It was Kazarski, Gimpy's ankle, and all who came up with end zone recovery. A touchdown, 13 nothing lead. Virginia Tech picked up its offense in the second half, but managed its solo touchdown win. Previously corralled quarterback Bob Swigert got loose for his 59 yard cancer down sideline before Scarpati. Uh, broke through three blockers to knock him out of bounds. Swiker wedged one yard touchdown. Four plays there with 6.35 on the clock. And Rossi, Rossi's effective quarterback keepers, killed every last second on the clock. Next, Mississippi State upset number five Auburn by a score of 13 to 10. The upstart Mississippi State Bulldogs took lead in the SEC by dominating. Second half and scoring on quarterback Sonny Fisher's 22 yard touchdown to halfback Old Barrell and guard kicker Justin Canales, winning 36 yard field goal with 22 seconds left. In the second quarter, unbeaten Auburn had gone right to work after Canales had provided 3 0 lead with 25 yard field goal. Tigers quarterback Jimmy Seidel pitched 19 yard pass to end Jim Engel. Now, next play, race to 47 yard touchdown before second quarter was over. Seidel passed 47 yards to the end. Howard Simpson to set up kicker Goody Woodall's field goal for 10-3 halftime lead. So 
the Bulldogs' only touchdown came in the third quarter at the end of the 66-yard drive. Halfback Price Hodges' run and 15-yard penalty foul it was a personal foul penalty 15 yards against Auburn. Key trip to Burrell's touchdown catch. Foles seam headed for 10-10 deadlock late in the fourth quarter. When Mississippi defensive back Fisher grabbed Seidel's fateful interception and got 25 yards to Tigers' 22-yard line. Bulldogs went nowhere against Auburn defense, but Cannell was true with his winning three-point. Michigan beat Illinois, the number two team in the country, by score of 14 to 8. No sooner had second-ranked Illinois leading 8-7 stop Wolverines drop at midfield and punt forcing punt with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. They seemed to start premature sniffing Pasadena's roses. Illinois suddenly lost its edge because in halfback Jim Warren's pitch out from two plays later was collared by Michigan halfback defensive back John Rouser at the trial 11 yard line. Michigan soon faced a fourth down and one at Illinois two yard line. The quarterback Bob Timberlake sneaked for fighting first down. Halfback Mel Anthony quickly scored a touchdown for Michigan's upset that was sealed by another Rouser fumble recovery late in the game. Wolverines had scored early in the second quarter as halfback Dick Ryan Fuss slashed three yards for seven up the lead at the end of the 52 yard drive. And the rest of the half was a defensive standoff. The lone Illinois outgained Michigan Wolverines 269 yards to 180 yards and had off the defensive fatiguing 17 play. 92-yard march in the third quarter. Illinois fullback Al Wheatland crashed over Gill goal line for final yards. The quarterback Mike Telefero ran for two-point conversion for one-point edge. Elsewhere, Michigan State took sole possession of the Big Ten lead at 4-0-1 with a 23-0 win over Purdue. Penn State beat Ohio State, the number 10 team in the country, a score of 10 to 7. Penn State lost midfield fourth down game in the second quarter, but guys traveled 46 yards in the eight plays to have back Paul Warfield's five yard touchdown run and the 7 0 lead. Lions clever quarterback Pete Lisk tied it with 13 yard touchdown pass to end Bill Bowles in third quarter. Key to tying touchdown march was Lisk hitting in Dick Anderson, future workers coach, 15 yard game. Faking handoffs left to stop gainer, had back Gary Klingon. Smith, who had 81 yards on 11 carries before rolling right to find Bowles beyond defensive back Warfield and Enzo. When Ohio State lost fourth down bid, one of three that Penn State defense stopped at own 49 yard line, the Lions soon cashed, had back kicker Ron Coates winning 23 yard field goal. What guys coach Woody Hayes was impressed with Lions quarterback. This did the job, best job of ball handling. I have seen in the stadium since I've been here. Number one, Texas beat Bell 7 0. Longhorns ball control kept Bell from making single first down in the second and third quarters. Everything often, Texas used quarterback Duke Carlisle's running and passing for 32 yard, yards of 45 yard drive to find the cash in third quarter touchdown. So this fullback Tom Stockton crashed over from one yard line. Bell, the quarterback Don Troll, got it. Bears the 19 yard line with 29 seconds left to play. 29 seconds left to play. Top Bell, the wide receiver Larry Elkins, who had 150 yard, 151 yards receiving on 12 carries, beat Texas defensive back Joe Dixon to end zone, but out of nowhere came defensive back Carlisle for saving interception. <clears throat> Texas tailback Tommy Ford rushed for 101 yards on 27 carries. Air Force beat UCLA a score of 45 excuse me, 48 to 21 in favor of Air Force over UCLA. Most dismal season since World War II, year 1943, was winding down for UCLA, who was winning seven after this loss. But Bruins managed to not score at 7-7 early in the second quarter when halfback Mike Hafner threw four yard touchdown passes up and Gail Hickman. Then the Falcons quarterback Terry Iggerson took over, passing for 111 yards on 7 to 10 passing, running for 41 yards on 5 carries and touchdown before half first half was over with Air Force and joined a 28 to 7 lead. The game's most spectacular play, Poe's first half scoring, Iserson drew UCLA secondary with up 
up with clever one fate. Then pitched out to highback John Ken Jaggers, who threw long past the wide receiver and Fritz Greenley to complete a 67 yard score. Isaacson ran for two touchdowns and passed for another in the second half. UCLA sub so advanced two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Including block punt that guard Dick Peterson loved 12 yard touchdown score. And finally, New Mexico beat University of Wyoming by score 17 6 as former former plague Cowboys were pushed from whack lead by New Mexico, which built 17 0 in the lead before allowing Wyoming inside its 35 yard line. Fullback Harris, who ran for 90 yards on 24 carries, had back Bucky Stallings, ran for 72 yards on 18 carries, were Lobos, rushing heroes. So that concludes a look at the week that was week number 8, November 9th, 1963, the college football season of 1963. The week that was college for this review. And uh, let's look at the AP poll as November 11th. Number one was Texas. Number two was Navy. Number three, Mississippi. Number four, Michigan State. Number five, Oklahoma. Number six, Pittsburgh. And number seven, Alabama. Number eight, Illinois. Number nine, Auburn. Number 10, Nebraska. So that's the top 10 for the AP poll as number one, November 11th. Once again, Number one was Texas, number two was Navy, number three Mississippi, number four Michigan State, number five was Oklahoma, number six Pittsburgh, number seven Alabama, number eight Illinois, number nine Auburn, and number ten Nebraska. So that concludes a look at the week that was, the games that were played during week number eight of November 9th, 1963. Gosh, voice review, please like and subscribe to the channel, comment on the channel. This is Rashad Mitchell. Until then, talk to you tomorrow.